nasty day. It's a nasty day, right, Mike? It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So we're at the Trek headquarters. This is where, was it a World Cup race? Yep. Two years ago, or was it this year this was year. World Cup yeah. as well? So uh, excited to be on the grounds of the World Cup race. Never got a chance to do this. Just looking at these guys racing right now, they are absolutely covered in filth and mud. So this is going to be fun. Uh, quite a laundry experience that will be taking place later <laughs> today when we get home, I think. <laughs> Holy smokes, friends, it is nasty out. The race course looks um, Belgian. It's gonna be a good day, this is gonna be epic. I'm really glad I came now. Changed up, it's still raining. It's like, it's so bad, it's good, kind of. Kind of yeah, it, it is that kind of car. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of tire pressure are you gonna run today, Mike? I don't think that matters much. <laughs> What's your pressure today, Nate? 120 PSI. Oh, that's a good one, man. You're going to be railing. <laughs> well, here we are, Brian Davis, races and so can you. This is the state championship for Wisconsin. I'm doing the Cat 3s. I could not get away early enough to do the uh, Masters 1, 2, 3, which is just as well because my fitness is horrific right now, which is great. So anyway, that's the beauty of being a Cat 3. So I like to recap for people who don't know what a Cat 3 is. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, Cat 5, at least where I live, is where things start. And then you go 4, 3, 2, 1, and then Pro. So in Cyclocross, I am a Cat 3 rider. And in row or Crit Racing, I am a Cat 2 rider, or Road Racing as well. So um, 5 would be Beginner, 4, 3, 2, 1, you work your way up. So Cat 3 is kind of a sweet spot to be in, in road or across because it gives you a lot of flexibility with your fitness. You can race up at a higher level or you can race down if you haven't been so focused lately. So this is a, a good opportunity for me to at least have fun competing um, and still get my butt kicked even though I was, you know, anyway. I've always been a 3 in cross and I like being a 3 and I don't plan on changing. So... Um, this course, so fun stuff, right? This this was just a ton of fun. It was a miserable day, I think I said in the intro. It's just, it's so bad, it's good. You just have to embrace it and have fun with it. So a couple things, I didn't get a chance to pre-ride the course, and um, you can see, obviously, it is a total disaster of a course. Um, it is so slippery, the video just does not do it justice. I want to apologize for the first time about the water bubbles on the GoPro mount. I was researching how to get rid of that. I think I have some solutions for future videos, so bear with me on this one. But um, this is probably the worst section of the course was right here, actually, at least while you would be on your bike. It was just spinning out and spinning out and spinning out and spinning out. So I'm only going to run you through my first lap because after that gets pretty redundant. I did end up figuring out these turns a little bit more later on. I did find some areas to pick up a little bit of speed and I fought back. I'm probably in probably 12th or 15th position right now and I ended up finishing this race in 9th and I was happy with that. I had no no complaints with that. So, um, you know, these sections we got a little intel from guys on my team saying don't even try to ride these sections. Just get off the bike and run and uh, hang on for dear life. I guess I was not prepared for how slippery this is. This is an off-camber running area and I had spikes I thank god I put those in right before I left um, there's no way to get through this course without spikes I don't think so I got those in but in any event uh, just a couple things to go through so if you are newer to bike racing I would like to or you haven't raced right let's just say that you've, you've somehow stumbled on this channel I don't know how um, but I'm really glad you're here I want to take a moment here and ask you to please subscribe. I really appreciate that. It helps me keep going just to know that people are maybe caring uh, about getting new people into racing. And that's kind of the point of the channel is getting new, newer people into racing or helping people pick up tips um, that I've learned in my years or as I learn every time I race, I learn more stuff. So with cyclocross, it is really low pressure way to start racing. 
you can be a cat five. You're not gonna be bumping elbows with people. It's not super stressful. You don't have, the crashing is really pretty easy. It's grass or mud and you know, it's not gonna be too terrible most of the time. You just fall over. <laughs> Almost always, you just sort of fall over. Um, so it's a great place to start. It's a really friendly vibe. Everyone's uh, supportive and helpful. It's it's just a lot of fun. The races are shorter. The fitness level is less of a big deal. Um, having your friends or family out to watch you on your cyclocross adventures is a little bit easier because you do small laps and you can see your kids more often or your significant other or whoever came to watch you or whatever the case is so anyway just want to put a plug in for cross as a great starter uh, way to race which is funny because most people who race cross are pretty into racing in all other aspects and just pick up cross along the way but i think it's just an undervalued feeder into our sport so something to consider if you have friends at work that are thinking about getting into bike racing cross is a great way to go um, and then the bike, by the way, is, is much more versatile than a road bike or a mountain bike. It's, it can do a lot of different things. So, all right, that's that. Uh, as far as this race goes, I did not end up falling this whole race. So we raced 45 minutes and I didn't fall over once, which I think I, I view as a, a negative, um, because it's clear to me that I did not push my tires to the limit. If I didn't fall once, how could I possibly know where those traction areas are? Now, falling eats up a lot of time, so it's not something I wanted to do multiple times, but at least once would have been good. That was actually kind of an unstated goal before I started the race. All right. Um, so when you're racing a course like this, what can you possibly do to try to speed up? Well, I did find some faster sections or some faster mentalities, I guess, as the day went on. So a couple things, as I've said in previous videos and anyone who uh, would be telling you how to race well in cyclocross would be telling you, point to point turns are probably a bad idea you want to be tape to tape so what i mean by that is you want the turns to be wider than you would think would make sense but on a cross bike traction is at such a premium that taking a nice wide turn usually gets you in uncharted territory where there's grippier grass and gives you the ability to carry more speed through the corner by going tape to tape so uh, touch one side of tape with elbow left touch the other side with elbow right and then um, I did find this. We're getting to the area of the course where there was a couple faster sections because I think the guys at Trek practice on this course regularly. So there was a couple sections that were basically like concrete underneath water. They were so highly worn uh, that the traction was actually really good because the water is not penetrating that dirt. It's just sitting on top because it's like I said, it's essentially concrete as what's happened there so it's maybe only a quarter of this course is that way but there were some key sections where that figuring that out as quickly as possible really helped out um you know if i could do the beginning of this race again i certainly would have i didn't pre-register so i didn't get a call up i was in the back row which is not a big deal our races are so small um but i let too many people get in front of me in the first couple turns because I didn't understand what I was in for because I didn't pre-ride. So that ended up costing me a lot of spots. Now this flyover, holy smokes, that thing is so much steeper than it looks. So if you watch the World Cup race um, at Trek headquarters, I believe Vanderpool was carrying so much speed over that thing that he was able to do a tail whip over the top, which is insane. I barely made it over. Every time I went over it, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen if I lose momentum here. If I put a foot down it's really going to hurt. I'm stump I'm going to slide down this thing. So this is what this was a key section. I passed a lot of people here. This is not a great example of when I pass people, but this is the concrete section. If you stay where it looks shinier in the middle, there's actually a ton of grip. So you can see this guy ahead of me. He's able to ride this thing up and he I think he passes some folks. I'm sure he does. And later on, I after watching him do that, I figured, well, what does he know that I don't know? Cuz on the sides, it was total slop. There was no way you could pull that off, but down the middle it was, like I said, it's like concrete. So later on, I figured that out. And in the last lap, I passed at least one person there. And earlier, definitely picked up a lot of um, real estate by being able to ride that section when everyone, almost everyone else was getting off and running. Um, so a couple other things when you're racing cyclocross, there's, you'll run into ruts in the turns frequently. And a comment that you'll hear as you hang around cyclocross more often is commit to the rut. 
And what that means is essentially there's really, if you try to get outside of the rut, the line where everyone else is going, you're going to lead yourself into problems. So just commit to the rut. And there were definitely some ruts, especially actually in this area. Good timing. Um, right here to my left, there's a great rut there. And these are another set of ruts coming up. Oh, this one, this one to the left. This was a rut that if you commit to it, you'll be good, but I did not. I think I had to put a foot down like that guy did. And now this section here is fast. This is again like concrete. You could carry a lot of speed through here. This first lap, I did not figure that out. Later on, I carried way more speed into that area, but it, I did get, every time I got into that area, I got behind somebody that had not quite figured it out to the same comfort level that I had. So I got slowed up a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it had nothing to do with my finish, I can tell you that. So I decided to only do the first lap because um, there's not a ton of reason to do past that. It's a lot of more of the same. I, like I said, I finished ninth. Nothing too interesting happened between there and then. Maybe a couple of slips and falls or people yelling at me or whatever the case is, but you get the point. Um, a couple other little mistakes. I feel like I was too nice in some of these turns. I could have um, been more aggressive at taking an inside line to grab, grab a space uh, or throughout the whole race, really. Um, one or two other comments on the clothing. I had a great day for clothing. <coughs> I ended up taking, I had booties on and Mike kind of questioned me. He's like, well, why are you going to wear booties? Everything's going to get wet anyway. Well, that's a really good point. So I took the booties off. I was really concerned about my feet being freezing cold, but I've been testing this new sock that I'm going to be coming out with at some point, And I had amazing luck with it today. My feet were not cold, even though it's 32 degrees out wet. My feet were soaked, but my feet were definitely not cold. Uh, during the race and even after the race for a little bit they were able to stay pretty warm uh, within reason so very excited about how the socks performed the shoes performed uh, the gore coat and warm-up was great and this was just a mud fest i mean my, the laundry uh, that i took out of here was was wild so um yeah anyway it was a really good day at trek i was really really happy i went to this race got out, got another race in. I think in a video earlier, I said I was done racing and somebody called me out on that in the comments and say, never say you're done racing. Well, uh, that person was dead right. I am not done racing. A little more to go in 2018. Perfect.